We're now in here chatting with actor Daya Vedia. See, I got it right. And even <laughs> though we were joking about saying it the other way, thank you for your time. It's been so much fun seeing you on Superman and Lois, Pia, Automata Pia. We've had several of those cast members on our show over the last few weeks. And of course, Bosch. I mean, there are so many amazing projects you've been a part of. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. Well, you've been quite busy and you are just, it doesn't seem that you have plans to stop. Let's start with Superman and Lois. This was a big deal to have this character show up in this universe. I think I've only seen them once before and that was in the Smallville version. Maybe there was like a an allusion to it, but this is kind of a big deal. How did that character and how did that whole, outside of obviously you auditioned for it, but let me ask it this way. What interested you in playing that character in particular? Um, well, I didn't know it was going to be on a Monopia when I did get cast. I think I've talked about this. They didn't, it was a secret. Yeah, they you did, you had real, no idea. No idea. They keep it hushed. So once I'd already been cast and I found out I was ecstatic. I mean, I've always wanted to play in this universe and I've always wanted to be a super villain, superhero. Um, so it was kind of just, that was huge for me. And um, then I found out later that Jay Jameson, the writer on our show, who um, directed, uh, he directed episode 11. So look out for that episode. He's the one that pitched Onomatopoeia to the producers, the showrunners, uh, season one, actually. Okay. So he he's a real comic book head, um, comic book head and he he's the one that told them about it. And then they didn't bring it until this season, season three. So I think that it's been in the works. And it's a challenge, you know, because Kevin Smith, I think you know this, that Kevin Smith said it would never, could never be done visually. Or I don't know if he said never, but. Um, he said I it would be really hard to pull hard. off. Yeah. He said it would be hard to pull off. And I think they did a great job. They made, how do you make sound visual? Um, and that was a big challenge for us, me as an actor too. How do I make this power visual? So um, I don't know if you saw episode eight. We we played with that a lot in episode eight. Yeah, that's why I. I found it interesting because I know when the show started, I think the idea, you know, we're talking about family and relationships. We already know who these people are initially. There's not a lot of backstory given about obviously Bitsy's character and Tyler. And of course we've had the kids on almost all the children. We've had Wole on who plays a Luther. And I now love Wole. yeah, Wole is <laughs> great. Wole. Love yeah, him. he was a lot of fun. So this is fun to see this character now introduced into the world, but yet it's not so villain, super villain heavy. We're still getting all the other pieces, but this is fun too. So as you said, I imagine it was probably just a ton of fun to be a part of this and share those scenes. Yeah, incredibly. I think we all got along really well. Like we're already hanging out. We're all friends now. Wale, Chad, Spence, me, Bitsy. We really like, they they welcomed us with open arms, Chad and I and Spence. And so it was like a family you're just going into and we've all stayed in touch. And um, I think the the most incredible part was, was episode eight because Wale was there, Chad, me and Tyler. And we were in that alley scene and yeah. oh man, we just went to town in the alley scene. That was late at night. And when I was doing all that stuff, you know, the next stuff was um, not just special effects. That was kind of me working okay. with the stunt coordinator and the director to create, again, the visual of how I'm going against Superman. Because I mean, the power to hold back Superman has to be vast. Right. It's no longer just kryptonite anymore that keeps him at bay. And that's that's a big deal in the universe because we haven't seen anything but kryptonite be able to stop him. So that was interesting to me when I realized, wow, Onomatopoeia has powers that could rival kryptonite. That's how powerful she is. And nobody can be in my presence except Superman. When I'm doing my power, you, I'll disintegrate you just by being in... <laughs> You know, it's, those are the, I mean, how cool is that? Like, I mean, everybody wants to have a superpower like that. It has to be fun too for friends and family when they find out that either their daughter, sister, whomever friend is playing such like an iconic villain. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. The, the I have to say, I've never gotten so many letters and <laughs> okay. emails and family. I mean, this is this role has been fun that way. I think people I think also the cancer story. Yeah. Um is touched 
a lot of people, because I've gotten a lot of responses online. A lot of fans have talked a lot about that. I think it's kind of, you know, I think it's hit everybody. We were worried it was going to be too heavy. Sure. That was one of the worries of all of us, kind of like, is this going to be too heavy of a storyline? And I don't know. I think they pulled it off great because I think everybody's been touched by cancer. Right. And how better to do it in a super villain universe where you really are fighting it on this level? You know, the, the I would say, I've said this in a couple of interviews, uh, the true villain is cancer, actually. Yeah. And I think that's what drives their or her, you know, is that is it's not just whether it's a blessing curse type of power, but it's also the physical ailment aspect of it too, which I think goes right along with what they're trying to do anyway in humanizing these characters, even like Wole's character, you know, or any of the other kids that we've had, like it's, it stays central to the theme. And really, again, we find ourselves empathizing with you in a way that we're like, well, should we? But well, she's sick. So we, we kind of feel like we have to, even though she's trying to kill Superman. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Don't you think though? I think like Todd and Brent, they're the, the showrunners. I think they're really good at fine, you know, threading that needle. Yeah. Their, their whole thing is not having really easy one dimensional pat answers. They want it to be difficult to figure out who's bad, who's good. I mean, because what wouldn't you do to save your family's life? your right. own you know where how far will you go i think those questions are really good and and just also the thing i like is the flipping between being a mother and wife and caring so much about you know spence meeting his girlfriend to then destroying superman like that yeah you know? even lex's character even though we're just now getting that now i think that's what has driven him his broken relationship with his father being mistreated exactly wanting to thwart his power over people we could talk about this all day you've been a part of some really great projects as i mentioned bosch that's just another highlight of your career where did the journey begin for you as an actor what interested you how did you find out about it where did that start um i've been acting actually since i was a kid uh 11 years old i got the bug um and i've always done theater i did i grew up doing theater in the bay area i'm from oakland California. okay i'm from the bay area too you're from the bay 415. Well, Vacaville, California. I mean, it's Vacaville Bay Bayish Bay related. Yes. I love Vacaville. Oh, yeah. We all know, you know. So, you all let malls. Got to represent the Yes. Yes. Center. All right. right. We are, we are, I'm, I'm Oakland, but also Berkeley. So, I did theater in Berkeley and Oakland and just got the bug. And then I went to UCLA for, so I came to LA um, and did theater and dance. And then it just, I, I just, I kind of didn't want to do anything else. I'm one of those. It was just from day one, I'm a kind of theater nerd, theater rat, and um, just kept it going with film and television and just fell in love with the business. And I've just been going at it. And, you know, it's one of those things where you're doing it your whole life and then some of the project hits that just is the one. I think Bosch was incredible because it was six seasons. It's a really great show. It was gritty, procedural. So I, I learned a lot on that show. Um, and then going from that, to a superhero show and where you get to do this. And then I'm doing another show right now where it's a uh, more like soap opera dynasty and it's all hair, makeup, dressed up. I mean, for me, that's what I like the most. Just all the different layers and levels. I can go from being a villain here and then dress up in heels and a fly dress. You know what I mean? That's to me, that's, I, I, you know, it's definitely like pinch yourself moments. Um, I yeah, I don't great. know if we can talk about that other project, but I did see that and it looks interesting. I'll be curious to see how that pans out. Is that going to be this year, next year when things go back? I know we're in the middle of a strike right now, so I don't know. Yeah, we're still doing it because those, the scripts were already written. Oh, gotcha. So we are contracted to finish. So those scripts were written. We already started before the strike. So we're going to finish out this and it's going to air end of summer. Okay. So that's, uh, yeah. So we're getting that one right away. But uh, after that, it's tricky. We're about to, I mean, Ooh, yeah. So I'm, I'm full support. I'm like, I'm in support of the, of all of them. And so I'm just gonna, we're going to see what happens. I, yeah, I hope it's not for too long, honestly, but I'm, I'm yeah, I think a lot of people feel the same way and hopefully we support too. And we're hoping things get moving along. That's the way they should. The writers. Yes. Do you make it back to the Bay very often at all or? I do actually. I go to the Bay a lot. We still have our home there. Okay. And um, so, and I'm always going back and forth. I love it. It's the Bay area is beautiful. It keeps me grounded. 
you know, sometimes when you're in LA, this is like, for those who don't know, and for those who don't live in LA, I mean, LA is its own, it's amazing, but it's definitely its own little bubble of Hollywood. And it's nice to go home and just sometimes just chill and, you know, just enjoy that Bay Area living. Yeah, you can't beat it. There's nothing like it. Oakland has some amazing places to visit and eat. And I mean, all that whole area is just beautiful and fantastic and fun. Well, this is great. And if people haven't watched yet, we still have a few more episodes coming. And then you've done a few episodes, of course, Bosch, uh, which is available uh, to watch. I mean, you've you've had a very eclectic career playing lots of really great people. Out of all the characters that you have played, is there one thing or maybe more that you've taken away from those characters that you've learned about yourself that's taught you about yourself? And made you realize either this is a really positive trait or I've had it in the reverse where it's like, maybe I should examine myself a little bit and go, I'm maybe a little too close uh, to this character. Yeah. Um, I always, I've been saying, honestly, and this is just completely real, going to Canada, going to Vancouver and shooting Superman and Lois was life-changing. It, 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 not to be so hyperbolic about it, but it really was because I think when you play a role like this, it does, people don't realize it does change you because yeah. at least for me, I, I go in deep. Like I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not method, but I do live it. You know what right. I mean? And so I think for those people pleasers out there, I don't know if there's any, anybody watching anybody people. Please. That's why yeah. I do this. I mean, there's obviously something deep there. <laughs> it's and, and you can make a, you can make it work. See parts of your life, it really works. But if you go too far with it, it can also block you. And I started to realize it's really crazy playing a villain because yeah. if you're getting to a villain mindset, villain isn't just, I mean, there's aspects of villains that you want to get in touch with. It's not about being a bad person or being evil, but villain, sometimes you're not going to be everything to everybody all the time. And you can't be. So if you try to be that you're, all you're doing is you're destroying yourself. So I had this whole revelation in Canada, like I have to, like, I have to be okay with not being okay to somebody. Right. Do you know what I mean? So I do. Yeah. Because it's not necessarily so black and white all the time. I mean, there's the, always the classic example of the serial killer. He was a sweet person. She was a sweet person to mom, to dad, but then there's that. I think that's probably far on one side, but when you have a character like this or other people that you've played that are a bit more layered, a little bit deeper, you find yourself rooting for them in a lot of different ways and even relating on some level. And it, as you said at the beginning of our conversation, it comes down to like, how far are you willing to go for family, right? And I think that's where you have to get in your head as a storyteller and be okay with it, right? And not just look at yes. the pages and go, yeah, this is a horrible person. And there's also somebody said something great to me once. They said, there's a, you can be kind, but not always nice. <laughs> yes. You know, and that's the thing. Cause that, that always stuck with me. I was like, cause I'm a compassionate, kind, empathetic person. I want to be kind to people. And that is important, but you can't always be nice. Not in every situation. Sometimes you have to be discerning. You have to. And so that's a tricky thing to navigate. And I think it's important though, because I always say getting cancer in real life, which I did, I think, right. you know, sometimes you can expend so much of your own energy trying to make everybody else feel okay, that it literally kills you. I mean, you can, it's, it can be that, it can be that extreme. So no, don't, don't, I'm not saying be a sociopath. Nobody, no, don't be a sociopath, but kind, but not always nice. Yes. That's like I tell my eight-year-old, I will always love you, but that does not mean I always agree or support with your choice. No, a hundred percent. That's exactly, that's the same thing with my kids. Exactly. That's it, it's teaching kids that, that they, and also not being praise junkies. Like sometimes just because I love you doesn't mean that I'm going to praise everything. You have to work for it. Sometimes you have to, you know, we have, it, it's not always going to be perfect because how else do we deal with adversity than right. when it hits us? So, you know, I think in this generation, you know, that there, there, there's a lot of those lessons. Yeah, so. so you're a parent, so you get it. Well, one mm -hmm. last topic, you mentioned cancer. That's a huge part of your story. You've been very vocal about that and awareness and that sort of thing. I think that's great. And the fact that you're even able to bring it to a character is a big deal. 
a message to our listeners, to people who might be struggling with that, recently diagnosed. I I, I I know it's it's touched everybody in some way, I think, whether it's personal or in the media, whatever the case might be. But what was or was there one thing, I think part of it is medical, but part of it is mindset and fighting and really just choosing to have the right attitude. How how what was there one thing that just drove you? Obviously, it might have been your kids. I don't know. Definitely my kids. I mean, you, you know, yeah. When you have little, I had very little children when they were all under three, three under three. So that was highly motivating. When you have little kids, you're like, I can't go anywhere. I mean, you know, you just can't go anywhere. Everyone, I feel like everybody's journey is different. So I hate telling people how they should do it. I can only speak for myself that it's, it is what Lois said. It's the fight of your life. Yeah. Some people don't like to use the word fight because for them that triggers something negative. I personally liked fight. However you want to call it, if you don't want to call it fight, but what the feeling behind it is the same, that you are just going to rise above it. You are going to, you're going to live. You are going to live. It is, it's like any debilitating disease. You have to get into this like space of, I am going to live period. End of story. It is just, and you get into that mindset and it just drives you and you you go into this other, I don't know, higher space, whatever it is. But man, it, you you have to do that. You have to do that. You want to, you know, to, you're trying to save your life. You're trying to save your life. And it's really, it's a deep thing to, and also the other thing I would say is I didn't do a lot of feeling sorry for myself. I was like, you know what? This is hard. I let myself feel it. And then I'd get up and go, I don't have a choice. I, you just have to do it and then and just and then know that you're not and to anyone who out there who's dealing with it you're not alone that's another big one you are not alone like oh my god just whatever you're feeling is so understandable and it's okay like if you feel that feel it and then get up again and live i love it what a perfect way to end superman and lois we're coming up on the season finale of course bosch which is available to stream on Amazon and all the other a million projects you've been a part of. Congratulations on all your success. This is very well deserved. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Brad. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. 